Hello everyone, we are starting Connection Wednesday series. Welcome to the last episode of the year. Today's topic is how to fine tune connection of hollow section. My name is Petra Dopinkova. I am product engineer for Idea Statica, and with me here is Adam, uh, also product engineer specialized for steel products. Adam, are you here with us? That's right. Yes, I am. Hope you can see and hear me. <laughs> Do you? Yes. Great. All right. That's great. So welcome everybody to this webinar. Last one in this year. So celebration. Okay, I'm turning off my mic now. <laughs> Let you continue. Yes, I forgot to warn you that Adam is overexcited about coming Christmas. We are streaming through GoToWebinar platform. You are unmuted by default, but you can ask questions through the side panel on your screen. So feel free to ask any question and we will try to answer you during the webinar or after we end the webinar. Today we have on the program to design a connection uh, of Rosenham bus station, designed by Light Structure Engineer. Adam will guide you step by step through the mo modeling process. And at the end, I will try to summarize the webinar a little bit. Before we start, I would like you to answer me a short questionnaire. Uh, let's get ready. Yes, yeah, you should see the question now. Uh, how do you use the application Idea Statica connection? You can choose uh, from four answers for maybe you use the application for big and complex connection or for simply ones or for all, or maybe you are not a user yet. Maybe it will change later. So please, vote. definitely. <laughs> After today, everybody's going to use that, right? I will give you a few more seconds and then I will show you the results. So I'm closing the questionnaire in three, two, one. And let's see how it went. So most of you use the application for all connections and then for the big, for the complex ones, cool. And there is few of you who doesn't know or doesn't use the connection app at all. So maybe hopefully it will change after our webinar. <laughs> okay. Yes, we will see about our performance. So okay. Thank you for thank you for voting, by the way. Okay, now let's continue and dive into the project. It's your turn, Adam. So let me take the screen and also turn off the webcams so you can have the full view on what we are sharing. All right. So let me take off. I'll take a few words about the uh, project itself, and then we will jump into the application connection and we'll see step by step how to do the job as engineers from Light did it. Right. So we are talking about this uh, for me personally, a marvelous project. It's a small one rather but it's just perfect this is a <clears throat> regional bus station in rosenheim that's a, a town in uh, western germany in bayern region and this is a, a part of the uh, transportation hub which includes a train station a bus station uh, bicycle stands and uh, all the utilities around that. And so uh, the municipality decided to reconstruct uh, the whole area. 
and the bus station was part of that. And what they did is they made a perfect plan, included all types of engineers or, or, or engineering branches. So not only structure engineers, but they also included architects, uh, information engineers, uh, electricity engineers, and so on. And they produced this uh, absolutely perfect and sustainable project of the bus station, which doesn't not only look great, but it also works great in terms of uh, traffic, in terms of movement of pedestrians, of their comfort, and also <clears throat> they included the uh, solar panels uh, laying on or serving as a glass roof actually of those um, roofs over the stands where people wait for the bus. And this supplies the whole bus station with electricity, including the information system about departures of the buses and so on. And uh, in, uh, let's say, low hours, it provides electricity uh, into the batteries that are supplying the whole uh, area during the peaks. So you can see this was a really complex task and they did it the most perfect, most up-to-date, most uh, high-tech uh, technologies that are available. And this project is just a great success of today's engineering. And uh, as you can see on this picture, those people there are proud of what they do. And they also like to celebrate the job. That's the opening of this new bus station. They had a party there. And I think this is the way how we should do things as engineers, how we contribute to society and uh, celebrate the successful projects. And also as a picture of the bicycle stands, because uh, they are, of course, uh, thinking in green, so it's not only sustainable in uh, electricity or uh, savings in the construction, but also they are, of course, uh, supporting bicycling around the city and this kind of traffic, which is also important and more and more important nowadays. All right, so that's about the project uh, that I like a lot. And now let's uh, see about the uh, structure itself. So it's a rather simple roof structure, uh, four columns supporting a, a raft <coughs> of the roof. And there's the main beam. But what is uh, interesting about this structure that is uh, all just custom made. It's made of welded custom cross sections uh, in terms to serve the um, wiring of the electricity and information systems and so on. So this is a fact that the structure engineers from Light had to deal with. And they produced this um, nicely looking and perfectly optimized um, structure. And part of that was, of course, where these steel connections here you can see pictures from um, the construction site during the erection and also a snapshot of the original um, output let's say out of the idea statica connection application five years ago and that is the the main connection of one of these inside columns and the main beam and the side beams. And this is what we are going to model today step by step. So that's for the introduction about the project. And let me jump into the application, <clears throat> which is right here. So let's start. So what I do, I just opened Idea Statica connection and I can here select uh, some starting template. I'm not going to spend much time here, just 
maybe select this one, which is most closest to the design. There is a column and continuous beam, and I will add two more beams later. Default steel grade S355. Uh, we are <clears throat> working under Eurocode, of course, since this is a German project. And uh, default bolt assembly used for this project is uh, this M20 10.1. Uh, nine, uh, but this can be, of course, modified later on during uh, modeling. Anyways, let's start the project. So let's get the data generated and jump into the work window. All right. So I have some template here, some operations I will get rid of because I don't want them. Also some uh, loads from the template that I will delete, leave just zeros. And I have some, um, or actually two members, and I will start working with them. I will just modify the cross sections of those and add more. So let's start with the column. This is a welded uh, hollow cross section. So I will skip rolled cross sections a huge library that we provide you here and go to the second uh, tab welded composed and here i have predefined some <clears throat> let's say templates of a uh, possible composed welded cross section so for this one i will pick this box blanches type all right and this will produce me exactly what uh, was used. So I will, of course, input the parameters like thicknesses and uh, diameters of the cross section. So it goes like this. This is the column 20 millimeters of thickness of all walls and 800 by 350. All right, columns in place. So I can continue with the um, continuous beam now, this one. So again, add new cross section. And here I will go, not for a box, but there was a delta shape, which we have actually here. So this box delta, all right. And now again, just uh, modify the parameters. So 570, 20 thickness. So we'll input this quickly. Just not, that's um, just a simple thing. Click OK. That's in position. Just one, one more thing. Uh, this uh, delta beam was upside down, so I will input the rotation of 180 degrees, rotate it upside down. All right, now the side beams. So let's add two more members. So one by one, um, rotation is zero here, but uh, the direction is 90 degrees in this case, and it's not continuous, but ended. And of course, it has different cross section, which I will change just right now. And this is again, this box flanges and the dimensions go like this, 100 width. And this is eight millimeters of the web's thickness and 84 of their positions. All right, that's the side beam or the rip of the rafter and say, and for the other side, I will simply copy this one and input minus 90 degrees. All right, this is it. Geometry, the first phase of the modeling is done in a couple of minutes. And Adam? Yes. May May I have a question? What if I want to use uh, my own custom cross-section? Is it possible? 
definitely that's a good note uh, to re remember me what i want to show you uh, so <clears throat> i was using the uh, let's say predefined templates for the welded or hollow cross section so you can see how many or how how many shapes what kind of shapes we have here if you're not satisfied with this you can still use the last option and this is the general steel cross section so this way you can produce basically any shape of the cross section and i want to show you how you can find more information about this and emphasize as well this new feature of version 22.1 and this is this search bar on top of the ribbon so here if i input custom cross section this is something i am interested in and press enter on my keyboard uh, a browser with results of search from our support center on our webpage, ideastatica.com, uh, pops up. And I can see that there is an article of our knowledge base and it tells you, shows you step by step how to create and use custom cross section, maybe something crazy like this. All right. So here you can learn how to do that if you are not sure in the application so this is a great way how to get help how to get information and of course a way how to learn how to do the custom fully custom cross-section thank you you're welcome all right so let's get to the second phase i like to um separate the modeling into three phases which is members load effects and then operations so second phase load effects here what i will do is use the data we get from excel sheet this is what the engineers from light our customers um, send us they picked for us the most critical combination uh, that was the uh, you know the most dangerous for the giving you the results and i will just import these uh, values of internal forces of each member into um, the program all right so i'll just copy this and in the loads uh, I will click this uh, XLS import that opens this tab and I will just paste this by control and V and the values are there. I will turn off this, uh, turn on this replace existing loads to prevent creating a second load effect. And I can see this is here. One important fact here is that uh, the loads in equilibrium is turned on. This is by default also a new thing from version 22. And this is actually the, the most safe and most correct way how to input the load effects. This ensures you can input uh, the internal forces also to the supporting member, which is in this case the column, and you can see the um, forces here. So we don't, we avoid mistakes, and <clears throat> you also have a visual control in this small tab below. Uh, unbalanced forces, it is called. So if this is all zeros, that's right, that's correct. So there are no unbalanced forces. All right. So uh, this is the, let's say, simple way how to input that. Of course, I could do more load effects, uh, just copy or add more. But in this case, we are, we, we've been given uh, the most critical one, so we don't need to calculate more of them uh, for this example. Adam. May I yes. have another question? 
Uh, yes, is, sure. there, <laughs> is there any other way how to input input load effects? Yes, there is, of course. There are, I guess, five ways in total. What I showed you is the import from Excel sheets. Uh, of course, what I can do is uh, in, input the load effects directly, manually, just uh, typing numbers uh, in this tab. Or the best for you would be to go here, type load effects, press enter, and see uh, uh, what we have here. So how to import load effects. Or there you can find uh, information and tips uh, about that. All right. Cool. <laughs> sure. All right. So that was for the load effects. And the third phase is <clears throat> operations or the main uh, design of the connection. All right. So uh, let's do that. I will start adding operations, and there'll be quite a lot because it's a quite complex and big connection right so let's start right away the first one i will pick is the stiffening plate to model the connection between the column and the main beam so the stiffening plate you can see it by transparent view is somewhere inside uh, the structure so let's modify its parameters all right, and I will place it to a member and that will be the member C, which is the main beam. You can see this now on the left bottom corner, member C, top flange one. It's top flange because I rotate it upside down, if you remember, All right? And I will set it as doubler front position. And you can see now what it produced, it's displayed together with welds. So I will also change the thickness of the weld to 12. And that's it. All right. What I will do is I need one more similar plate below this one. And I will then bolt them together. So <clears throat> I will copy this operation and just change the origin from member to this plate. And that's right there. I'll turn off the welds because these plates are not welded together. And that's just fine. Now I'll, I will get rid of this overlapping end of the column. So I will add a cut operation. All right. I have added the cut and I can see there is some, there are some warnings, uh, right? So this is something uh, not to be scared of, but it's rather a great, another new feature of version 22.1 and it's the plate and weld clash warning. If you are, if you don't like this feature, you can turn it off in the code setup, just right here. But I do like it because it's a great thing. And it gives you information that you have made some mistake and maybe you have something wrongly set in the parameters of some operations and there are some plates and welds overlapping. If I go to transparent view, the overlapping parts get highlighted in red. So I can see all this um, is clashing. And of course, if I input this, press enter, I can also find more information about this in some articles telling you how this works exactly. Well, since this is very simple to understand, you don't have to read that, right? And we can continue modeling. So I will now just correct this operation to prevent this clash. And I will cut 
this B column by uh, deflate SP2. All right, so you see the warning disappeared. I have no clash anymore. I will just change the welds to butt welds or full penetration welds. And I am done with this column. All right, next operation is the bolts. That means bolt grid or contact. All right, I will use 10.9 and M20 size bolts as was designed in the project. And <clears throat> there is one single bolt somewhere inside. So I will just uh, input the correct um, position of the bolts I want to produce. So I will input the coordinates like this. And that's for the rows in this direction. And in the position is for the perpendicular direction. And the coordinates goes as follows. All right, bolts in position right in the corners all right if you are confused by inputting these parameters for bolts uh, what numbers or what um, semicolons or colons or whatever or just space you should input just hoover your mouse over um, the name of the parameter let's say and you will get the <clears throat> help or a tooltip um, explaining you how this works all right so uh, i have connected the column and the main beam and I will, I will continue what's next um, is inside of the main beam and dot r stiffeners because we have big forces coming from the side beams we need to stabilize the inside of this huge main open beam right so to have better view what's inside i will turn off these members and concentrate now uh, on this job here so i will add another stiffening plate and use it as a stiffener logically so um, again i will modify the parameters clash warning of course uh, but that's because i'm not done with this and again i will change the origin and put this plate into right place and this is just right it i want it inside here weld it to the top ribbon which is actually the uh, sorry top flange it's actually the bottom flange here and i want to have it Weld it on both sides. So let's switch that. All right. And as you can see, if I click on this navigation cube here, uh, I have some cap here. This is correct. This is for the cable routings and electricity cables and whatever. And one more thing is if I rotate, I will and move this stiffener slightly to the side because I will be adding one more here because I want this detail to be really stiff. One last thing here is I need to cut these overlapping parts. So I will use operation cut off plate and of course modify it. So I will be cutting this plate it has disappeared because I need to change the cutting plane, which will be web one of the C member, which is this. And you can see it was cut on the other side. I will change this by changing the positive or negative surface of this cutting plane. And you can see that the weld is there, cut is fine. Again, I will switch to double plate 
and just copy this operation and say, okay, <laughs> do the same for the other web. And there it's just mirrored. So I need to change to plus instead of minus. All right, and that's it. Stiffener is in place and I will produce one more just uh, to the other side. Of course, I will help myself with copying these P cuts as well. So just copy them and change the um, plate name and we can see we have both of them in position. All right, and this was still not enough. So I will produce one more pair of stiffeners here and they will be just uh, smaller. So not 500 millimeters, but up to half of the inner space. And of course, um, further from the center of the connection, they are aligned with the column uh, face. And again, the same procedure, just copy these P cuts easily and produce the correct cutting and welding at the same time. And one more to the other side. So input minus 170 to push it there. And again, the P cuts, got a lot of P cuts operations, right? But that's because we are dealing with a complex, uh, fully custom made connection. All right, that's for the main beam. And let's now move to the side beams. <clears throat> Here the situation is similar. Uh, the connection of these two is very simple. I'll show you what it is. It's just the cut operation and a full penetration or a butt weld between these two. So I will select M4, cut by this one, and I will switch to full penetration weld. And that's right there. You can see it in the transparent view. Those are the yellow, uh, yellow lines in here. All right, so this is now welded. The, the whole rafter was prepared in the workshop. So that's why there are full penetration welds and some special details as well. So they didn't do it on site, but prepared it nicely before that. All right, so for the second member, the same one. So just copy the cut operation and change the member that is cut. And that's it. But what more is there is again stiffener inside member M4. So I will copy the stiff, some stiffening plate. I will just steal it from here because they all uh, hold the same thickness and so on. So I don't need to re input this for newly added stiffening member. So that's the magic of the copy button, which I love the most on this program. And I will now say this is a member M4 and change the other parameters. Of course, the dimensions, this has to be bigger. Where is the plate now somewhere here inside. So of course I need to uh, move it. Okay, so now this is looking better. I've got the weld at the top flange and I need to cut the rest. So again, I will use the P-cut operations. So let's pick Let's copy a P-cut and say, okay, I will be cutting now by M4 Web 2. So I'll do that. Change the surface, all nice. Copy to the opposite web 
change the surface. And the last one is the, the bottom flange and change the surface here. All right. And there's a stiffener welded all around inside this box section. For the other side, of course, I will now all copy all that and just change the member M3 here. So copy this one, M3 Web2, of course, the plate as well. Copy this one, change the plate and the member number, and the third one for the bottom. All right. So, 10 seconds, and I'm done with the other side as well. This is great. And we're almost done. Just uh, this was still not enough to uh, for this connection to take um, the loads. In the critical combination we have inputted here, there is um, a snow, a side wind, and there are also huge, uh, you can see huge moments that are trying to turn over this rafter to one side. So we have to stiffen this or not we, but light engineers had to stiffen this and they used rips to uh, connect this to the end plate here, connect the main beam and the rips as well. So I will produce those rips right away by using um, a rip operation, which is this one. And so I will change the member here. I will be adding the rip to between the member M4 and this doubler end plate SP1. So it was produced somewhere at the end. And of course I will modify this. Let me first input the correct um, size of the stiffener. So that it looks something like this. I will move it to the correct position, which is web two, as you can see on the left bottom corner of this member four. So let's pick this one. And the surface is just not both, but um, the lower one, which is, <laughs> the negative one, which is towards um, the free space. And I will move it to the front, which means closer to the node and input the distance to move it exactly to the edge of the end plate here. You can see the welds produced as well on both sides, which is just right. And I will do one more thing and chamfer these um, um, sharp edges of the triangle by 20 millimeters. So this now looks nicer and also prevents some stress peaks. All right, that's the rip. And what I do now is I need to uh, have it also on the rest of these three edges. So let's copy it and move it to the right position. So this is pretty easy. Instead of web two, it will be web one, which is here, of course. So let's do that. And instead of lower surface, it's the upper surface. Well, but that's it. And now for um, the other side, let's rotate this model. Of course, 
I will change from M4 to M3. Have it here and copy this one and say, okay, now web two and lower surface and is there. So four rips produced, <clears throat> of course, copy it because we are saving time. And I will make one more copy and add rips to this space between the main beam and then plate as well. So let's do that. Uh, made a copy. So now it's rip five, fifth rip on this connection. And I will change to member C and that is web two now, which is correct. And here, because this is a continuous uh, member, I switch from front to center. So the middle of this continuous beam, I can see um, the rip somewhere lost, well, not really lost, but reduced uh, in this position, which is just okay. And I will move it five millimeters slightly towards the node. I will also switch the uh, position of welds to outside only. Also switch the uh, weld thickness because we are saving material here. We don't need to have thicker welds than we actually need. And we will see this in the results after I calculate this. And also I will chamfer this a little bit more and make it uh, slightly bigger. So I have it stronger, right? So it's like a closed box here of these rips. All right, and one more thing is I can use, in this case, uh, this function of repeating the rips along this C member, this continuous member. So I will say, okay, produce me two. And uh, the other one will be minus 350, which is actually the dimension of this column, right? towards the other side. Great. For, for the other side of the connection, let's just copy it and say, okay, this will be web one and the upper surface. And it's right there. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, operation phase is done and we are uh, finished with the whole Good modeling. Job. Good job, uh, Adam. <laughs> I, I like the connection a lot, but to be honest, really? the list of the operation looks kind of messy. It's possible to sort it somehow. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Thank you for your compliments, Petra. <laughs> nice to hear that, but you're complaining by the operations list, which is uh, in case of complex connections uh, can be really long and can be really messy. So if I would, for example, now like to change the weld between the member M3 and member C, and I will decide to <clears throat> switch from butt weld to uh, fillet weld. Now I will be, I will have, uh, have to spend some time looking for the correct operation, right? Because I cannot click on that weld because it's inside. So I would have to browse the whole list here, but there is a solution, another a new feature of version 22.1 and that is this sorting or different views on the list of operations. So right click on the operation uh, menu. And if I sort it by member, I will see the operations 
uh, just under member name. So if I navigate to member M3, I can easily identify the cut producing the weld and I can switch to fillet weld if I like to. I don't, so I switch back. But uh, you can see the great benefit of this feature. There is also another option by operation type. So it uh, puts together uh, the operations of the same type. So you can browse them one by one like this, right? So this is the sorting operation. I hope I satisfied your sense for uh, tidiness, Petra. Yes, <laughs> <And> nice. <laughs> great. All right, I'll switch back here because I, I like the, I prefer the old, old messy style. But anyways, uh, if I get back to where we ended uh, a minute ago, we have finished uh, this model. So let's calculate it and see about the results. <clears throat> so now the finite element solver is doing the job. It's quite fast, so no time for me to go for a coffee, but I can do that after checking the results under the check tab. I can see that this, um, this connection is very well optimized. My welds are um, checked against the 5% of plastic uh, strain as is described in the Euro code. So I am very well, or not me, but the light engineers uh, who designed this connection uh, paid attention of uh, utilizing or using the most of the capacity and saving uh, any extra materials on this connection. So this is already very well optimized uh, design, <clears throat> which is great. And if you are interested in uh, going through some of the detailed results, I can, for example, click on this weld and see about the um, stress distribution along it. If I scroll down, the weld is highlighted in the list. I can by clicking on this plus button, open the uh, equations as per code with all the numbers. And I can also, which is the best thing of this 3D finite element um, engine we are using for uh, connection application, I can see that stress distribution and also the deformation trend. So I can see if I overscale this deformation by 50 times, I can see what's going on and clearly there is a huge moment trying to turn over the whole roof on the column, but since uh, the structure and the connections are well designed. This is prevented. All is fine. All is safe. Uh, sorry, switch back to this colored picture. And I, as the engineer, am done. Last step is to print out the report. So I go there. I can uh, save the report in editable uh, format doc, which I can then later edit in Word or other editor. I can save it as PDF. I can also produce uh, some uh, drawings that are hiding in this uh, bill of material. This is these drawings useful for workshops. So those are uh, 2D sketches. I can save them in DXF format as well. 
All right, so that's uh, for the report. That's the last step. And now I can go for coffee because this, uh, my dear attendees was all from my side and I can switch now the presenter back to Petra to finish the presentation, right? Okay, thank you for demo and let's summarize a little bit of what just happened. You could see the whole process of uh, modeling the complex connection. It was pretty fast. It took probably about like 30 minutes. Of course, it would take more time if you would start from the beginning and you would uh, need to optimize. But you could see that it's quite easy to do all the optimization and changes changes during the process. And what's important, we got complete code checks and we can be sure that our connection is safe. If you want to get inspired, you can find uh, the connection already on, at our website. Go to the support and downloads to the support center, continue to learning and sample projects and steel connection and the last one is the one you just saw or you can also check the other okay so that's it and now let's move to the questions i will try to pick some that make that will make adam uncomfortable let me see so first one i will read it as it is hi nice. adam <laughs> We know that it's not possible to consider welds between the plates in composite sections. What type of weld is considered by software in this case? <clears throat> All right, that's a good question. Uh, so by default, and this cannot be changed for now, if you are if you are having welded composed cross sections, all the welds are considered as full penetration or butt welds, right? So they are not code checked. And uh, there's often a question, how can we add a, <clears throat> a fillet weld and, and check this weld? So this is, so for the cross section, right? And this is not possible for now. We always consider the welds as butt welds, but this is a feature we want to work on and we want to add uh, into the software in some coming versions. So stay tuned, we will do the job because this is the request of you, of our customers, which we listen to, of course. So just give us some time and, and we'll satisfy you, hopefully. Okay, right. let's answer the second question. Uh, can you show how you check the load position like we have in the bolts node forces? Mm -hmm. Yes, I will probably take the presenter and share my screen and show you that on the model. That would be much better than just talk, right? So <clears throat> I can use this model. If I go back to design and navigate to load effects. So this is what I have here. If I switch to wireframe view, I can see the moment diagram and the internal forces that are all in the nodes. So those are <coughs> nodal internal forces that I obtain from my global structure model. Um, so typically from softwares like SAP2000, um, RFM, uh, StartPro, ETAPS, SIA, and so on. So I take the results from there. So nodal internal forces and put them here. So they sit all in the node. And I can see <clears throat> if I um, click on each uh, member in this tab, the moment diagram, right? <clears throat> and if I want to, in some cases, if I have a maybe a, a pinned connection where uh, the hinge is located further from the uh, node. So for example, if there was a fin plate in here connecting this member to this um, 
surface to this web of the main beam, I would like to switch the position of uh, the shear force to have the zero moment in this point. So then what I do is I change the forces in here, position from node to either bolts that will automatically identify the bolts of the fin plate here or to position and I can manually um, input um, where the shear force is located. So maybe 300 millimeters. I show you what it does in the wireframe view. <clears throat> That's not that visible in this case, but uh, it shifted the moment diagram towards the free end. All right, so those are the uh, possibilities how to check uh, the internal forces and how to move them along the member. Thank you. We have many more questions, but we are running out of the time. So keep yes. asking, keep us busy. We will respond later after the webinar. And we will, yes, we will also go back. I can see that, <clears throat> sorry, this, our colleagues are continuously answering the questions through the chat as well. So if they miss some, we will just send the answers later by email to you. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we can we can <laughs> move to the next slide. After the webinar, you will receive a short survey. Please give us a feedback as we want to be better and better. Also, if you want to rewatch the recording, you can find it in support center at our web page or on YouTube channel. If you are if you are new, you can you can try trial version. Also, you can find it at our web page. Or if you have more questions, you can try to find some help in our support center where we have tutorial, tutorials, more webinars, theoretical background and more. As I said at the beginning, it was the final episode of the year. So next webinar will be 1st of February 2023 and other events will be announced. So stay in touch follow our social and check your emails and our web page to keep updated. Also, because we are in festive move, mood, we have entire promo and you can get fair discount on extra seats or for more products. And last but not least, I would like to wish you Merry Christmas or I would like to wish you to enjoy any other celebration you might be celebrating this time of the year at different parts of the world and all the best in 2023. Yes, this is uh, the most important of today's webinar or show. Uh, we wish you the best in the coming year. Have a nice Christmas time. Be safe and uh, we send you all the happiness from our side and see you some next time in the coming year. So bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.